we recently got a lot of rain i ran around took a look at a bunch of our sump systems now our jobs are scattered across a really massive massive service area and i just go and check the most recent installations some of them i actually videoed so i'm going to pin that one in the description and you know i'll leave it at the end screen of this video too so you can watch it after you watch this one but i wanted to bring this up because it's a really good point so we had an m98 in this system and we took it out and we put an m53 so why did we go to a one-third horse when we originally specced in a half horse everybody thinks bigger is better and i'm always trying to tell contractors no it's not it's not bigger is not better you can't think like that that's the wrong mentality I'm gonna give you the perfect example. Our M98 took one of our full frame Screaming Demons with seven foot of chamber, sucked the water out so fast. I mean, it was ridiculous. Then you just wait for it to fill again. Then it happens all over. Guess what? We're gonna get more cycles this way. Now, I spec the systems in so that, you know, you try to take what you think there is for water and you try to figure out what you're gonna lose in gallons per minute on the rating of that sump pump based on the height that you're you know, pumping the water. Well, this was 120 feet, this discharge line, and we weren't thinking that it's flat. It's not uphill, so we didn't need the M98. We put the M53 in, swapped it out, took the M98 out, and what happened? While it's pumping down the chamber, more water is pouring in, you see? This results in less cycle times. Bigger is not always better, guys. Okay, so another point that I wanted to make, when I run around to go look at these jobs, you're not gonna see them in a downpouring rain because I'm usually on the side of a highway with everybody else because we couldn't even see to drive. And in a lot of the videos that I'm gonna be putting up because I got some good results, it's right after the rain, and you can see the French drains pulling water out of the subsurface, and, you know, it's cycling the pump. But it's not like it was during the downpour. Now, in this video, what we did is we unplugged the M53, okay? I'll tell you why. I like to see what the capacity is when I can control it. I like to see what the capacity of our system is so I can give the homeowner a gauge. Like if there was a power outage or a pump failure, what do you have for like a dry well or detention tank that's, you know, basically our system. And I'm happy to tell you that this big system that we put in, I think it was 220 feet of French drain, three inches of rain. And then I needed to turn on the pump. Now you're gonna see some catch basin footage in this and I just want you to know that that pump was unplugged in some of this. When I said, hey, we just got three inches of rain, you can see that there's like foam in the catch basin. That's because the water was so high. It was already, you know, after three inches, you know, reaching near full capacity. Then in some of the other video, in this video, you're gonna see where there's no water at all in the bottom. Well, that's because I plugged in the M53. So anyways, just to explain what you're gonna see, but I hope you guys learned something. I hope that helps you when you're trying to choose a pump. Guys, we use a one-third horse almost for everything. It just makes sense. Now, if the pump is being overwhelmed, oh yeah, then you go up to an M98. And if that ain't getting it done, you go to a two-inch sewage pump. All right, brothers, here you go. All right, we're at four inches of rain. We got four inches of rain in the last 17 hours. We had a flooded backyard. What we did is we put in a French drain grid. We ran a lot of drain. We ran a yard drain in a French drain. And we got a one third horsepower. That's what we got. We don't have check valves, so we got to fill the line. This is normal. What you see is normal. The line's filling, we're pumping. We got an inch and a half line that goes into a four inch line. We don't want any erosion so we mellow out the flow of water. You can see how gentle it is out of, out of a four inch line. That's a one third horsepower pump. This has been running for 17 hours. 
what you see is it's just been rain. Hurricane Barrel came up through the U.S. I was shocked when they were saying we were going to get, you know, four or five inches of rain, but yeah, it's happening. I went to this home, two different rain events. This is a three inch rain. System was unplugged. You can see the catch basin is full. You can see the foam is to the top of the grate. Then hurricane barrel came through we got four inches. See, we rain. designed the 12 by 12 turf restrictor plate so that the turf grass doesn't grow over any of the inlet. So we got a 12 by 12 turf restrictor. It restricts the turf from growing over the six round. That's our full throttle six round. Look at that. It'll take 500 gallons per minute. That's what it's rated for. It's pretty impressive. We're in beautiful Bruce Township, Michigan. On a big sprawling lot with beautiful trees. This is why we're here. All the land slopes this way. There's high ground for as far as the eye can see. The street is on a downward angle. The property comes like this as well. There's no way for the water to find its way out of here. We got downspouts. So we got rooftop water being dumped here too. So we have the area of the roof. We have all this acreage. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna run a French drain grid. We're gonna have a line here, 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 and a line there. We're gonna tighten up this area and we're gonna gather up all this water. We got the two sprinkler boxes here, so we got all those mains. So this yard used to flood bad. Behind the garage, there'd be standing water. They couldn't mow it for weeks. The yard is like a concrete parking lot. That's how solid it is. It's really impressed, impressive. Here we go. So this is normal. You got no check valve. The pump kicks on. Kind of burps water a couple of times. You know, it's pumping. It's pumping full blast, but we have no check valve, so it's got to fill the line. That's why we have a bigger chamber on our systems. So right here, this is going to be the amount of water that we're going to get out of this cycle. When the water stops, when the pump turns off, because the chamber's empty, the water some of the water will drain back to the chamber. That's why we have such a large chamber. If we put a check valve on this line, see it turned off and there's still water running out. So by going from an inch and a half to a four inch line, you break the siphon and you're able to take some of that water. All right, so let's take a look at this. I did a full installation video on this. Four inches of rain. Behind this garage would be so wet. So we know we're going to run into a lot of sprinkler lines. Sometimes it's worth hand digging. When you find all those mains right near the box, better off hand digging in most cases. So we're going to collect up all this water. In its deepest spot, it's probably five inches. Every bit of four inches for sure. You know, our first line is through here. I like to put a line where it's the deepest. This is definitely the deepest right in here. I'd move that line over here, come through here. These are extended. Those parallel runs are extended. So they're gonna grab up the water that's there. Over here, I wouldn't bother with that line. Again, line in the center there. You know, go right through the heart of it. Line right there. Your two parallels will take care of a lot of this. 
When there is absolutely no way you're going to gravity drain water, you have to go to an outdoor sump pump system. The reason why you want your sump pump basin 12 inches below the bottom of your French drain trench is because it takes 10 inches of water to turn on your outdoor sump pump. And it's sitting in a basin that has it lifted off the ground an inch and a half. So you need to be 12 inches below the bottom of your French drain trench so that you don't hold water in your French drain trench. Otherwise, if it was the same height, you'd have up to 10 inches of water in your French drain trench before the sump pump would turn on and then pump it all down. This is a really large system. This was a seven-man crew. We did the install in one day. This was the only job we did that day. People always want to know, what do you charge for a job like this? A job like this is going to be in the neighborhood of $15,000. We came in with five trucks, five trailers, a seven-man crew, and we were equipped with the very best materials and supplies that the homeowner's money could possibly buy them. We guarantee that we're going to build a system that will last a lifetime. A wise man once told me, if you're going to use a really strong, good corrugated pipe, then you have to use really strong, good fittings too. So we use non-recycled, virgin. Look at this. Dry. No standing water. Just absolutely beautiful. So this was the yard that had all this high ground. High ground as far as the eye can see. And all the water would end up right behind this garage. They couldn't mow right through here. We did a French drain. We went right through here, right through here, picked up all the water in that low swaled area. It was trapped. It was like a bowl in here. We got our 12 by 12 turf plates. Look at that. God, is that a beautiful sight. That's a 12 by 12 turf plate with a six inch round drain grate. Look at that. Big monster full throttle blind inlet. Big monster full throttle six inch basin right there. And it's dry. Look at that. It's dry inside. That's impressive. So all the water And we're downstream a little bit here. We got a little bit of water still running out of the grass. The French drain's grabbing up a lot of it and keeping up with it. The conditions of the site. So this yard used to flood really bad. You can see right now, because of how hard it's raining, here's our 12 by 12 turf restrictor plate. And you can see the 12 by 12 turf restrictor plate is preventing the grass from growing over our six round inlet. This is our full throttle. Look at that. So notice how we have the great domed. It's higher in the middle and it's domed. You see how the grass blades are all trapped around the edge? That's what an atrium grate does. Look at this. This is beautiful. We have a steady rain, a really good rain right now. Over three inches of rain. This yard flooded bad. All this water is running from this high ground. We have our outdoor sump pump system right here. Beautiful job by the guys. This is why the French drain man team 
minimum has three months of work in front of them. Always. Always. People are always blown away. Right now, we got 85 jobs in front of the crew. And we'll do 40, probably 45 estimates this week, which, you know, is not far off from our norm. Obviously, this rain is just going to, you know, it's going to bring us uh, extra calls, higher, higher, you know, estimate totals for probably the next few weeks. That's the norm. Beautiful. Look at this. Look at how nice this came out. Just amazing. You can't even tell where the guys cut off the side and put the drain. It's really hard. It's really hard to see. I think we're, it was right in here somewhere, to be honest with you. Even I'm second guessing myself. It wasn't that long ago either. Just an amazing job. These sprinkler boxes were underwater. Heck, one of the lids was floating literally floating in my before video four inches of rain 17 hours of rain this would have been so flooded absolutely beautiful our 12 by 12 turf plate kept the grass from growing over the six inch round basin look at that beautiful stuff yeah i'm a junkie this is uh you know drainage contractor porn i don't know what else to say so we went ahead and we just ran that discharge in a dual wall sleeve it was an inch and a half discharge i wanted to do a one piece all the way to the ditch it was uh, about a hundred and twenty feet i think but i couldn't be happier with the results the results speak for themselves man the wind is really strong so uh Try not to destroy all my camera equipment, my stabilizer equipment, all that stuff. <laughs> Let's see. So I couldn't be happier with how the system's performing. It doesn't take long. There's so much high ground and the water's coming off so so many other lots, neighboring lots, and these lots are so big. These lots, you're dealing with acreage here. I, I'm going to guess that every lot is about two acres in here. So you have all this water coming off the high ground from the lots around it. You have acres and acres of water collecting. And it ends up, unfortunately, in a bowl. That's what happened. Just somehow it got missed during the development. We couldn't cut a swale down to this ditch because the utilities run right through here. So here we go again. You know, we have this real long discharge line. This one-third horse pump is it's pumping. It's emptying out. The Screaming Demon full frame is what we got. We used the Screaming Demon full frame. We got a one-third horse. When you go to a four-inch pipe at the end of your discharge line... So you basically want to have your discharge line humped in the middle so that when it turns off, half the water runs out to the ditch and the other half of the water runs back to the sump station. And that's by design. You want to try to break the siphon and you need it to be dry. It can't hold any water here in the north or it'll freeze in the winter. And then when you have a thaw, it won't be able to run because anything that's under the turf grass, the turf grass insulates the ground. And it takes days and sometimes weeks to thaw out below the turf grass versus above ground, which happens pretty much instantly. If you have a warm-up and you're above freezing, the snow starts to melt. If you have precipitation come in, you're now going to get rain. And for whatever reason, when we get a, a real warm, you know, we have a, a spring thaw we have a January thaw, we have a February thaw. These are things you just get used to in the north. And for whatever reason, when you have that thaw, it brings rain with it too. It's wild, but that's what happens. So you have snow melt on top of rain. So it's really hard to, to say just how much water you're gonna get when that happens. If you have a foot and a half of snow on the ground and it all melts and you get two inches of rain, 
you better have a pretty good system in place and you better have a system in place that can that can constantly year round 365 not be frozen be ready on the ready so we put a heater in our units and we build them so that there's no water anywhere to freeze the discharge line has to be completely free of water the entire length of it beautiful i can't i can't even emphasize enough how happy i am with the work that the crew has done you know we're not that far into the season we've already got 75 jobs installed and just everything during this four inches of rain has worked flawlessly and we've been doing this for years the phone has not rang with any calls regarding failed systems this was a monster system it was a quad pack and if they have a power outage they don't have to worry about it we're going to be able to contain all the water until the power is restored if you like these result videos give me a thumbs up shows me that you appreciate me going out in the rain and sharing my experiences Thank you, everybody. Until the next video.